the more arrogance you display, the worse a coach you become. And so as John Russell was saying, you know, I'm the most arrogant coach in the world because I have all this ego attached to my uh, marketing materials that shows me as, you know, superstar. However, the very nature of being a great coach is the humility of being able to support someone else in coming up with their answers. So there's a paradox in there. And the paradox is, as good as you can be is directly linked to your humility. And as soon as one becomes an arrogant coach, you have lost the essence of the pure spirit. Could you elaborate on more on the, the elegance? Like what kind of display would that be even like? The arrogance? So that no one would be going. Well, I, I can tell you about my own journey. And my own journey has been one where I started out um, being very clear that I didn't know for other people. And uh, I, I was just convinced that I didn't know the answers for others. So I, my coaching was very pure. Now, as people gave me more and more feedback, it kind of inflated my ego. I thought, hey, I'm getting pretty good at this. Uh -huh. And the more my ego got into play, like I don't really know what I'm doing, hey, let's do a coaching session, I would sit down. And then if my ego was engaged, my coaching would become a little tarnished, a little more about me than it was about them. And since I'm a rather reflective person, I'd start to notice what was it about that last session that wasn't quite in the slot. And I would realize that more of my ego was present as opposed to my humility of wanting to serve. And the dance of ego, humility, ego, humility, ego, humility, you know, getting feedback that makes the ego inflated and then realizing the only way I'm going to be a really effective coach is to lose the ego, let go of the arrogance, and be that pure coach that I was initially when I knew I didn't know. <laughs>